Hi everybody, Adam here from Audience, and today we're going to be showing you how to get your DAW set up with your ID interface. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Ableton Live. So first things first, we're going to need to connect our interface. I recommend doing that first. If you've got any speakers or monitors, leave the headphones unplugged for now, leave the monitors switched off whilst we do the rest. We don't want any kind of clicks and pops causing any issues down the road. So we're going to plug in, I have an ID14 here, but the process is the same with an ID4. Plug the USB-C cable into your Mac or PC. If it's a Mac, it may be a USB-C on the other end. If it's a PC, it may be USB-A, which is the larger square connection. Both should work exactly the same. If you're doing this with an ID44, you'll need to plug in the AC connection at the same time. Now, whilst it is possible to use an ID interface with some limited functionality just by plugging it straight into the computer, we highly recommend going to the audience website and getting the latest drivers. This means that you will have maximum compatibility, full functionality, and everything that the interface can do will be available to you. So let's go to the Audient website now. Once we are at the audience.com website, we can go to the top to products and find the link to the audio interface that we're using. In my case, the ID14. Having said that, whether you're using an ID4, 14 or 44, the drivers are the same and can be used across the entire range. Now we're on the ID14 page, we can go to download at the top right and that will give us both the documentation, so the manual and the start guide, as well as the macOS drivers and the Windows drivers. Download the relevant one, install them through that process, and I'll see you back here shortly. Once that's installed, you may need to run the ID app at the first time, but this may come up automatically when you plug in the ID interface. The first time you do this, it will come up with the Arc Creative Hub window where we have some fantastic software and tutorials available to you as you register your interface. I'm already a member, so I'm just going to close this window. Now I can see the ID mixer in front of me. This comes up for the ID 14 and 44, but for the ID 4, everything is done on the front of the interface. No mixer required. At this point, I'm going to plug in a microphone and then get that ready to use in my DAW. Now here's one I prepared earlier. This is a vocal microphone that needs 48 volt phantom power. On the front of each unit is a 48 volt switch per channel. So I'm going to turn that on, on the channel one, which is where I have this connected. On the ID4, the 48 volt control is on the rear of the unit. Once the microphone is powered, we're going to need to adjust the gain on the front of the interface until we see reasonable levels. Now on the ID 14 and 44, we can see in the ID mixer now on screen that there is appropriate level coming in, if not a little much. On the ID 4, we move the monitor DAW knob all the way to the left. And then on the LEDs on the front of the unit, we should then be able to see the levels moving as needed. Now we've got our microphone plugged in with appropriate gain and power, it's time to fire up Ableton. Now Ableton here has brought me up with a default project, but let's go and set the preferences first to make sure it's using our ID interface. So the second tab on the left here is audio. And we want to make sure that our driver type is core audio and that our input device is the ID 14 or four or 44 and that the audio output interface is the same. Now, Input and output config are quite important in Ableton because we get choices of how many inputs and outputs we want to see and how we want to see them. If we enable the ones on the left, that shows us mono inputs, so separately, one, two, three, four, etc. On the right, we can enable them as stereo inputs, so pairs like one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. I'm going to enable them all as mono inputs and leave the stereo inputs as they are apart from one and two, so I don't get a huge menu full of options I don't need. But if I was recording things like keyboards that were in stereo, I might want to enable more stereo inputs. Same on the output config, where I might want to add more stereo outputs, so maybe I've got an alternative output to more monitors or a different headphone mix, anything like that, this is how I would show those on the inputs and outputs in Ableton. The in-out sample rate is important to choose at this point. 
I tend to use 48 kilohertz because that's kind of the film TV kind of standard for audio. Whereas if you're working with CD production, you might want to choose 44.1. There are other options as well. Those are slightly more niche. If you know that you need to use one of those, you can do right here. Further down, we have buffer size. Now buffer size is related to latency. Latency is important because if you're going to monitor live through Ableton, so to speak, then there is a very slight delay between the sound going in, being processed, so if you've got something like a compressor or an EQ or reverb, then coming back out through the headphones or the monitor speakers. The computer needs a small amount of time to do this, but how small that amount of time is, is defined by this buffer size. The smaller, the, the shorter the latency is, but that comes at the cost of the computer being put under significant amounts of strain. So if there are many tracks with lots of processing, you may find that you start to get dropouts and glitches with a lower sample latency. So you may, in that case, need to select something slightly higher. I usually go with 128 samples as a good kind of middle ground. If I'm starting to find that I have issues because I have a busy mix with lots of plugins, I might extend that up to 512. Now this default Ableton Live project has got two audio tracks in here which I can use. If I need to add more, I can right click in the blank space and insert an audio track. Now what I'm going to do is use this channel 3 audio here that's been provided for me. And the audio is from an external in and it's coming in from input 1. You can see all the choices here that we enabled in the preferences. And you can see there's a nice green meter going up and down. We can't hear it yet at this point because we've not configured our monitoring. The first thing that we need to do is turn on our speakers, plug in our headphones, and then on the ID interface, press the speaker or the headphone button and turn up the level respectively. That's usually down by default as a safety measure. So make sure you do that if you're not hearing any audio. Second thing to do is the input monitoring. And we have two choices there. It's either monitor in through Ableton Live or through the ID mixer. Underneath the input here, I can click monitor in and suddenly we can see levels in Ableton Live. There is that slight buffer latency, but any processing I want to do can be done here. If I turn that off, the other option is to go to the ID mixer. This version is near zero latency and we can turn this up and that is arguably more natural, but we can't apply any processing at this point. So those are the choices. Now you may find that you're hearing what I would call a ghosting effect. So a doubling or a, a kind of a chorus effect. And that can be through the same audio coming from twice. Once through the ID app and once through Ableton. In this case, we need to make a choice to turn one of them off. And in this case, I'm going to turn down the fader in the ID app and turn on the monitoring in Ableton and make sure that one is on and not the other. And that's it. Any questions you've got, please feel free to leave a comment down in the section below, or feel free to reach out to us at Audience and through our support team. Thanks everybody for watching, good luck, and have fun.